all the committee members should have received in, in the agenda packet. Yep, the PDF. Uh, the transition plan executive summary. 188 pages or something like that, <laughs> or 17 pages a part of it, yeah. Yeah, 17 <laughs> pages is the exec executive summary. And then we had the analysis, what is, uh, you pages. know, 110 pages. <laughs> and this is just a small fraction of the actual study. I actually have uh, a box in my office about the size of this podium that is full of individual photos and documentation of all the deficiencies throughout uh, the city in terms of public facilities as well as our, our park areas. That in terms of deficiencies, I'm talking about uh, areas of concern for compliance with the ADA. In other words, the American uh, Disabilities Act. Uh, this, this, I have a little slide show, and basically we'll just kind of walk through this. This is going to be, you know, a, just a really broad overview uh, for the committee. As you recall, during the capital improvements, we've starting in 2021, we're allocating or requesting. $250,000 on an annual basis moving forward to address these concerns. In, in, in 2019, the city worked with our, our insurance company, cities, uh, basically the acronym is CIVMIC, Cities and Villages Mutual Insurance Company. And basically they required us to do really an exact accessibility survey to can be completed under the Title II uh, of the American Disabilities Act. So what does this include? The, 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 this plan that CIVMIC wanted us to do, they, they recommended working with Accessibility Consultation and Training Services Incorporated. They're out of Wheaton, Illinois, and they've done multiple plans for CIVMIC members, such as the city of Sheboygan and other communities in their, in, in their, in their group. Uh, some of the recommendations, they're not all infrastructure. So it talks about we really need to do a comprehensive policy and procedures review for our city. And that could be you know, employment, uh, job descriptions, um, accessibility for meetings, for instance, and agendas, all of that type of stuff. Websites, uh, as you can see, are, are, are another example. One of the big things that came out, and that's really what's driving this is, that's public works is the infrastructure and ranking mechanism for how do, we, how do we go through the improvements that we're going to be looking at over the next decade, potentially. The other thing is we talked about, I talked about policies, you know, we talk about the language and registration forms and brochures. All of those have specific requirements under the Title II of the American Disabilities Act that we're going to need to do internally as well. Grievance procedure. What happens if there, someone does, you know, have a, a complaint or a concern that, of the city of, hey, you're not meeting city of Sheboygan, this is my concern. How do, you, how do we address that? How do we um, comprehensively review that and come up with solutions? So that needs to be uh, refined and, and delivered. The other thing is, power-driven mobility devices. They're really becoming popular. The cost price for, for them is really becoming, with the technology, more and more available to those necessarily that were handicapped, maybe we were confined to a wheel, wheelchair. Now they have the ability to have power-assisted, battery-operated mobility devices. And lastly, service animals. Uh, they're more and more popular. Uh, they're more and more prevalent throughout, throughout the, the, the area. And what's our policy in handling that? Public Works Department, we, you know, we maintain over 40 parks. An overall review of the facilities and parks was, was comprehensively uh, assessed. Parking, walkways, Bathrooms, all of that was part of part of this. This is just an example of Evergreen Park, you know, showing we have a drainage issue. Here's the handicapped spaces, uh, no signs. So, you know, things things that ultimately we need to really concentrate on. Um, it's just not some paint in a in a parking lot. It, we need to do this right. 
These are just some more examples of, of deficiencies. I can you know, zoom in on here. Here's you know, trip hazard. Uh, these, are, you know, these are facilities that we walk on on a daily basis and use, but you really, you know, you don't notice them until you really, really take a look and look at some of these factors and really get into it um, because they are barriers. And this is really what we need to focus on in terms of being, you know, if we're going to continue to be the choice place to live, we need to be accessible for all. Then it goes to our facilities. This is just our, our service building. So service building, you can see our front door. We have a trip hazard and it's not even a power assisted door. So, you know, we're, we're currently not in compliance. Uh, bathrooms, again, um, we're, we're, the building's 50 years old and we're in need of, of repairs. This is just one example. We have multiple buildings, you know, throughout the city. City Hall, we're fortunate we just did a major renovation, so we're, we're, we're in good shape here. But, you know, we have the senior center. We have other facilities throughout the city that comprehensively we need to undertake and improve. And this is what I was talking about, the, the mobility devices. Uh, they're becoming more and more prevalent, more and more popular. And just at, at our park here, just as a classic example, settling around the park shelter, and it's a trip hazard. You know, for the majority of us, we don't even notice that. We just take it as a step. But if you're having someone in a, in a wheelchair and a mobility device, uh, again, it's it is a, a, a real concern. So what do we do? We've done a comprehensive inventory. We developed a budget for all of these items. And now we have to prior to prioritize this and start to comprehensively starting attacking these deficiencies. We, we're not gonna be able to do this all at once. It's far too expensive. The total budget on this is about $2.5 million. So again, 250,000 a year, it's, you know, it could be a 10 year program. But, but at the same time, on any other city project, we're, we're looking at doing some major cap, capital investment at Kiwanis Park. As part of that capital improvement, we're gonna do some of these repairs. So we're gonna leverage those projects along with this money. So it, it shouldn't take us 10 years, maybe seven, but we're gonna, every year we're going to make a concentrated effort to address the, these issues and attack them on a prioritized basis. These are just some examples that, of, of recent projects. The Shaw Family Playground, for instance, once that was a, a great asset, great project, but one of the things we noticed right away after it was installed was uh, the, uh, the, the, the sidewalks and ramps to the, to the park weren't in compliance. So you can see we, we added Handicap, nice detectable warning fields, and the grades are really nice and uh, sloped, real flat. Uh, they're not on a, on, a, on, a, on a pitch or an angle that would be uh, as a barrier as well. So that's an example of taking in a project, leveraging that project, and making the improvement. So as I mentioned, 250000 for the next five years. Uh, we're going to alternate between our our parks issues with the ADA one year, and then the next year, we're gonna look at our facilities and buildings and grounds. For 2021, we're starting with our parks division so that our parks infrastructure can be improved. And in 2022, uh, the facility infrastructure, such as buildings, will be improved. I know that was a real high level uh, overview, but there we, we through this process, and I, as I mentioned, it is a tremendous amount of volume of paper that we received. Mm -hmm. We did get from the consultant uh, just a, a, a general spreadsheet of everything. We've consolidated that, and what's up on the screen this evening is, is we've developed a pivot table to even further drill into the data. Uh, because if you look at all the priority ones, they were priority, all the priority ones together total 1.5 million. Well, we're not gonna be able to do all the priority ones. 
all at once. So now we have to rank the priority ones. And how do we determine which of those is the most important? So we're going to look at criteria, you know, heavy use in the park, the age of the park. Are, are there any other planned improvements within the next five years to this park? Those are all factors that we're going to refine and develop. And then when we go into the 2021 capital improvements, we'll present to you based on these criteria, these, these factors, these are our priorities for 2021 for the improvements within our parks. So that's where we're at at this stage. I know it's, I'm throwing a lot at you at high level, but uh, it, it is a very important uh, part of our community and uh, we need to take it seriously. You know, one of the things that by, by, by not only uh, having this plan, one of the things, you know, in the Sheboygan area is we're, we're, we have a good tourist economy, very good tourist economy. And it's one of the things that outsiders visiting, we need to make sure that our facilities are, are at the level they need to be uh, because ultimately it serves a greater good for our community. 